Hey guys, welcome back to Justin Reads Romance. I'm Justin, and today I'm going to be talking about my TBR for the Historical Romance Readathon. The readathon is hosted by Lacey, Lisa, and Jessica, just like last time. I'm so excited. It starts on the 15th and it ends on the 21st, I believe. I'll definitely put up the dates over here just to make sure. This time the bingo board is 16 squares large, and I'm really excited. It gives us a lot of opportunity to discover new types of historical romance, and I have my list already, but first I want to go over all the prompts for the bingo board. We have different social class, new to you author, recommended to you, marriage of convenience, damaged hero, Joanna Shoup, blue on the cover, published before 2000, recent release, either 2020 or 2021, has a step back, a shirtless man on the cover or the step back, a standalone, rip bodice on the cover or the step back, indie published, used book, and widowed heroine. I'm really excited about a couple of these or like one of my favorite tropes in historical romance. So yeah. The group pick for this readathon is A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. It is the third book in her 400 series. I have yet to read the first two, but I'm just going to dive right into this third one. I'm definitely getting a lot better at just diving into a book and not reading an order. Reading an order is kind of something that I've always done and if I'm recommended a book later on in the series I'll try to go and read them in order because sometimes you need that information. Jessica recently read Devil in Winter and she was like I wanted Sebastian's character development and that happened in the second book and like that's the type of stuff I'm always afraid I'm going to miss but I'm just gonna dive into this third book because I really like the premise of it. The heroine arrives in New York because she is looking for a husband. She does not want to marry the person that her parents have picked out and so she comes to an agreement with her neighbor who he's an inventor and Jessica said in her video which it does not say in the blurb right here that he is a deaf hero so I'm very interested to see how that's all going to work out but they agree to have a marriage of convenience that is only gonna last one year and it's supposed to be platonic we know it's not gonna stay that way and I'm really excited to see what Joanna Shoup has in store with us with this couple when I was searching for recent releases I just read a couple of new release historical romances that would have been perfect for this but honestly it's created such an opportunity to discover new historical romance authors and I'm really excited about this next one I decided to pick Slippery by KJ Charles this is a recent release and it's an indie romance and I've never read anything by KJ Charles so I'm really really excited and it's an MM historical romance set during the First World War. I'm sorry, it's actually set in the 20s. So after World War I, the hero is a veteran and he's inherited this secondhand bookshop. And I think like everyone assumes that he has this like information. So I'm wondering if there's something in the secondhand bookshop that some information that people are looking for. And his love interest steps in to like help him discover what this information is. I don't know if this book ends in an HEA. It might be a series or a romance that happens over multiple books, but I'm really excited to read this one. I really love the cover and I'm very interested to see what KJ Charles' writing is like. I love finding new authors and this is like totally different from the historicals that I usually read. I don't think I've ever read a historical set in 1920s. That's like the closest time period I've ever read for historical romance. So it's definitely gonna be an adventure. The next book that I have is Rebel by Heather Graham. Each month during my TBR videos, I select a random book from a cup, from a list of titles that I already own, and I picked Rebel. This book happens during the Civil War, and I think it's kind of an enemies to lovers from what I read of the synopsis. I don't know if the hero and the heroine were forced to marry after they got caught in a compromising position, but apparently they're on different sides of this war and the heroine is a spy that the hero is tasked with capturing. I'm not sure what this has in store because of the Civil War setting. I don't know how that's all gonna play out. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I've never read anything by Heather Graham before, so this is a first for me. Let's see what year this book was written in. Yeah, 1997. So very interested to see. And then I love the step back. She has wearing leather pants, which I find amazing. So we'll see how that one works. The next book I picked is To Seduce a Sinner by Elizabeth Hoyt. I'm really, really, really excited about it. It's one of my favorite step backs. I just really love it. And let's see, this is a marriage of convenience, I do believe. The hero was actually left at the altar, and I do believe that the heroine has been pining after him for years, and she actually offers to marry him as an alternative once he gets left at the altar, and he really needs to produce an heir, and I hope that this is going to be like a really sweet romance. I'm really excited about it. And I decided to pick up this Virginia Henley, The Hawk and the Dove, because it's technically a standalone. And I had a lot of trouble finding a standalone for this historical romance readathon, 
Historical romances are usually in a series and I really wanted to try and stick to books that I already owned And so I was looking through and like all of them were part of a series except for like two Virginia Henley So I decided to pick up this one I already had it on hand because I was comparing it to the new gentle rogue cover So I was like, you know what perfect. I'm going to read this one So actually the heroine was married by proxy against her will She's kind of vowed to get the upper hand in this proxy marriage by making her husband like obsessed with her so that she can basically rule the marriage. I don't know what to expect from any Virginia Henleys. I have not read them at all. I have a couple of hers, but I've yet to go read them. I don't know when this was published, 1988. So this is one of um, the earliest romances I will have read, period. So we'll see how that <laughs> plays out. Then I decided I was putting Beverly Jenkins Rebel on this list because I've been meaning to read this for the longest time and I was like this is the perfect opportunity. I don't care how many squares it covers. I'm reading it for this historical romance readathon. This is set during the Civil War and this is a part of like she has like this universe of this Levesque family. I've read Captured definitely and I don't know where that falls in to this whole family tree. But the hero is a Levesque and he is an architect in New Orleans and the heroine is from the north and she has traveled south to kind of help the emancipated slaves find their footing and educate them. She's opening a school but of course she's receiving some harassment and so the hero, I don't know if he's going to like protect her. They're definitely going to fall in love of course so I'm really excited. I know a lot of people really love Rebel and I've been meaning to read it for a very long time. Next is The Raven Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt and the reason why I picked this one is because I have a lot of Elizabeth Hoyt's first of all, but it's a widow romance and I don't know why I love these types of historical romances so much, but I really, really, really do and so I was really excited. I remembered that I got this one in a recent haul and I was like, okay, it definitely has to be on this list because one of the prompts is a widowed heroine and I'm like, Perfect. So the heroine is a widow, but now she's in financial straits. She's not doing very well. And so she agrees to become the secretary for an Earl. And she discovers that he plans to visit like a brothel. And she does not like that idea at all. So I'm assuming there's going to be a buildup between the sexual tension and he's going to have to go relieve it. And she does not want that to happen. She is definitely into him. So I'm really excited. I read a romance recently that kind of had that I have three alternatives just in case I'm not feeling one of these and I decide to DNF because I'm not going to push through if I'm not liking one of those older romances. This is just kind of like contingency plan just in case or if one of them is taking me a really long time to read I might switch it up just so that I can get more books read during this readathon because I've had such great luck reading a ton of books during these readathons and I want to continue the trend. The first one is When the Duke Was Wicked. I'm actually waiting on my paperback copy of this, but it's been stuck in a post office in California for like three weeks now. I have no idea if it's going to get here on time, but I plan on listening to this one on audio anyway. I'm really intrigued by this one because it's a childhood friend romance and the hero is actually a widower. I believe the heroine's trying to find another husband and he's vowed to help her find them. Like she has a fortune, so she's struggling with fortune hunters and he's like, I'll help you weed through those. And in the course of that, they fall in love. So it just sounds like my perfect romance. I've been on a huge Lorraine Heath kick. I'm determined to read a lot of her backlist this year. If not all, I mean, I don't want to jinx myself by saying all, but a lot of it, hopefully. Next, I have The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean. I know that Crystal really loved this one. That's why I bought this book. And I'm just really interested in this because it's a marriage in trouble. I don't often read marriage in trouble romances because sometimes the characters are a little frustrating, but I'm hoping that this one is just really good. This will only be like the third Sarah McLean that I've read. And I know that she's a lot of people's favorite author. So I'm just, so that's another alternative. And then I put Wild in Love on there because I did read the prequel late in 2020 and I want to read the rest of the series. I'm just very intrigued by the amount of siblings in this series. There's like eight or nine siblings in total. It might be more, I don't know. I forgot how many at the end of My Last Duchess, how many kids there were between the two of them because the hero and the heroine of My Last Duchess already had kids. She had one and he had like eight. And I think they might've had two more. So that's a lot of kids. I don't know if every single one of them is gonna get a book, but I really wanted to start this series. And if I do have time, I will start that one. Earlier I did mention that I had When the Duke Was Wicked on audio. There's a couple more 
books that I plan on reading on audio for this challenge. Uh, Slippery Creatures by KJ Charles I have on audio and also Rebel by Beverly Jenkins I also have on audio. I plan on listening to the audio and reading the book at the same time. So I'm really excited for this reading challenge. Let me know what books you picked for this reading challenge. How many books are you setting yourself up with? I definitely put quite a few more on there since I'm doing some audiobooks. It definitely helps me read faster. I can already tell a difference in this first week of January how much audiobooks help with my reading habits because I can listen to them during the day while I work. I don't know why I haven't been doing this my whole reading experience. I have no idea. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you subscribe to get notified on any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with a little HEA. Bye guys.